Yo, what up? Let's get into the real side shits of Charlotte. Yes, this thing on third episode. A lot of these damn scenes could have really been, you know, not even put in. I don't even understand what was going on in some of these scenes because they were just... I'm like, what the fuck is really good and why is this scene this long and drawn the hell out? But let's get to where we picked up off of last week, the, the ultimate stage scene where you got bricks popping up on Ralph and then Zara just so happens to pop up with no purpose of coming to the damn salon or whatever, but to confront bricks. It was stupid, like how y'all set that situation up, but whatever. I'm going to go ahead and see how it went. Um, Zara pretty much laid the damn law down, like, look, the dude, Nicky Band, that you spent no with or whatever, like, dude, he foul as fuck, and I just, you know, I get that coin from him. I strip from him. He be at the club spending that dang on dollar on me, and it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? She dips out, dang on bricks is pissed off because she can't take what she done her, so she gets the dang on talking about how she ratchet, how the shop is ratchet that she in, so then Ralph does the obvious, you know what I'm saying? Talk about the ratchet dang on dudes that's been up in her pussy. I'm like, come on now, you know? This is the real side shit to Charlotte, so I'm pretty sure she done had, you know, a bunch of damn ratchet dudes run through that ass, okay? Um, but anywho, they go through their whole little tip or whatnot, all for damn bricks to come back with. You know, why I was coming up here to originally invite you to, um... To my boob job that I'm supposed to be getting done in a couple of days, you know. And so Ralph's like, you know, girl, well, I come, you know what I'm saying? He kind of shady or whatnot. I don't even know, you know, if they really, you know, are cool with Ralph or is he just kind of a throw-in or whatever. He just kind of seems like an extra at this point. This is, by the way, some of the interactions and things that's going, you know what I'm saying? But... You always got to have you a damn gone gay up in the mix, okay? You always got to have you a damn gay up in the damn mix, okay? So, boom, after he agrees to come, we're going to move right the fuck along to the next scene. So, we got the girls out. They out of the club, and this is um some venue, whatever, Ryan Davis was performing at, or he was there for the after party or something. So, you know, the girls, they think they had shit willy. You know, they supposed to be the VIPs of the night, so they up in there, you know, as the real side chicks of Charlotte. Anywho, I guess they got a couple of fans, and they might have promoted them hoes on the flyer, because the dude was like, you know, I want to get a dang on picture with y'all, you know what I'm saying? What's up? What's up? What's the tea? Okay, so Shador's like, you know what I'm saying, hell nah, you can't get no picture with us, you know what I'm saying, what, what your money looking like, you know what I'm saying, because she wear side chick with a badge of honor, like, this is what she was born to do, like, she don't want to be nothing else but a damn side chick, she the only one that pretty much is promoting this show constantly, you know what I'm saying, and her damn commentary and everything like that, like, this is, she take this shit serious, bitch, okay, <laughs> um, so old dude's like, what the fuck, girl? Like, I I ain't paying y'all girl shit, okay? You know what I'm saying? And you up here coming at me, and you the ugliest one. Like, what's really the damn tea? Like, I expect to be, you know, these other girls that look way better than you to be asking me for some money. But you up here being real extra and shit, like, nah, okay? And I will say this right here, Shador, you do be looking cheap with that old cheap ass down Dollar General lipstick, uh-huh. Mm-hmm, you be L.A. coloring that shit the fuck out, okay, bitch? And, um, you know, with your damn hair, I don't know what it is. It's always kind of puffy or whatnot. I don't know. It gives me, like, real 1980s vibe and everything. Like, I just, I don't know. And then the way you be carrying yourself, girl, it's just really not respectable. And I really want you to take off that damn green Crushed velvet ass Gucci damn dress, that little halter top pull up shit that you been wearing a confessional, cause it is not flattering to the body, girl, and it is just not the tea, period, bitch. Okay, get that shit back to the dang gon' do you brought that shit out his damn trunk out of the little cellophane clear bag, bitch, cause it ain't no real. All right, <laughs> let me just go ahead and tell you that. Anywho, you know. The girls, they laughing at the situation. You know, she like, I was just playing. I was just playing. The dude's like, whatever, whatever. So she like, you know, you broke anyway. You broke, you broke or whatever. So I'm like, girl, go ahead and get you, you know, a real acting gig or something so you can stop down asking every dude you meet for some damn money because you looking real broke as fuck, okay, bitch? You looking real gutter snipe broke as fuck, bitch, okay? Um, let's see. 
Anywho, you know, they get, you know, her to calm down. The dude, he kind of gets calmed down or whatever. You know, Shador, you know, she's she's still going on her little antics and everything like that. Storm is pretty much, you know, trying to calm her down and everything. And Storm, what the fuck is going on with your hair and that blonde stuff? Look like you laid two big-ass tracks or whatever. And then you just said, bitch, I'm going to swoop this shit over for the night or whatever. We're going to call it a day. Like, it's just everything about your hair just does not be right at all. I mean, it's always looking matted. It's always looking real cheap. I don't, I just... I don't know. Do you have your damn tracks and shit up in a fucking drawer in your damn room or something like that? You know, I just, I don't know. It just seems like you just got just a whole bunch of damn tracks in your damn drawer at the house. And you going there and re reaching there, wash them shit style, straighten them, and then glue them shits in your head, bitch. Just the hair just don't be right. Period. Okay? Anywho, let's move right the hell along. Damn, Bricks is sitting down with Lynette uh, and her little friend or whatever. And then um, she pretty much goes into this whole spiel about the dude, Nikki Vans, the kimono dragon. And she just, you know, head over heels for him. Because she, you know, she pretty much wants the dude to pay for her dang on boob job and everything. So that's pretty much why she been dealing with him all along. Anywho, Lynette kind of schools her to the game. Like, bitch, you need to get over your damn self. Like, he got... Too many damn girls out here. You done found out that he got a dang on wife or something like that. So why are you even dealing with this dude? Like, I mean, and probably, you know, the dude probably dicking her ass down. Because ugly motherfuckers like that, they be having some good dick or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's probably what the damn T is. But, bitch, you can do way better than that. I mean, you a simple ass white girl, you know what I'm saying? Ain't much to your ass. I want you to blend your motherfucking weaves a whole lot better. But bitch, um, you can do way better than his dang on ass, okay? He must be dang on packing something dang on 12, 13 inches thick, girthy ass meat, okay, bitch? Um, cause the way y'all girls is up here, you know, juggling him back and forth out of all of them dudes that's up in Charlotte. And I'm from North Carolina, so I already know. What the fuck Charlotte is giving and you know how the country boys and the city boys be giving Bitch, you can do way better than that. Let me just go ahead and tell you that, okay? All oh, y'all can do way better than half these dudes that's on this damn show. Boom, let's move along. Briggs, let me just say this right here. Get your boobs done and leave that dude the fuck alone, okay? Now let's move the fuck along. Boom, damn, um, Ralph, um, He's at the photo shoot with Shador, and he's doing her hair. I don't even know if he's doing that shit for real or what. You know what I'm saying? Shador track and shit is slipping. She wanted him. You know, don't get too close to my track. It's already slipping. I'm like, bitch, what? You didn't re-glue that shit, reattach that for you, and came there, but you got this man doing your hair. And Ralph, why? how you up here trying to be a damn hairdresser and shit, and you, um... I ain't even got no damn weed glue with you. Come on now. Like, what's really good? Talking about God, nigga, if you got the glue, i do it for you. Like, seriously? Are you really a hairdresser, dude? Like, what's the tea? What's the tea, okay? You already know what these girls is giving. They giving dang on weed glue. They ain't getting legit ass lace fronts and sew ins. They weed gluing it the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's back in 1990s. Or whatever, so you should have had your glue and all that, so these girls could be all the way tight and right. But that's why I say, I think this whole particular thing could have possibly been fake or whatnot. Anywho, Zara, you know, she comes in and, um, you know, Ralph gets talking about the whole run in with her and Bricks and how they was at the shop and all that. How I just turned real left and everything, and, um, Shador's like, I don't even know why y'all talking about this whole Nicky Vance dude. I know all about him. He used to date some girl around the way, way back when. And it just is what it is, girl. Like, he got money, but that's all the fuck he got, okay? Phone, let's move along. Dang on, Lynette sits down to have dinner with Twan at this little restaurant. I don't even know where the hell they at. It looked like some type of little Mayflowers or something like that. A little mom and pop shop. I don't know. Anywho, um, he's back in Charlotte from, you know, his, you know, tour or wherever he was going, you know, from New York. I don't know. These people got these careers, but, you know, I don't know how far y'all careers going up there, y'all. You just be playing the motherfucking intermission, the commercial breaks, bitch. Let me just go ahead and tell y'all that. 
I don't know, you know, where it's going. Anywho, she's pissed because, you know, he pretty much has been messing with her friend Nikki on the side. Remember the girl that she brought to the threesome that had better looking panties than her? They had a better built body than her. They had a better looking weave than her. They just all around look better than her. Okay? And she come up in there with that damn puffy ass weave and shit. And with them faded ass panties with that little pink outline. And she was... Girl, it was a setup for failure, okay? Because you brought your homegirl that just looked way better than you all around and had cuter panties than you or whatever. And then you think that he was not going to go her way? Girl, bye, okay? You should have been bringing some old girl that was, you know, at least two or three or four or five notches not cuter than your ass, okay, bitch? But no, you bring a bad bitch, you know what I'm saying? Then you want to sit there and shade her, um, talking about, you know what I'm saying, this plastic girl, she got all this plastic surgery, you want this fake bitch, but you would just send up her dang on bringing her as a dang on makeup and apology uh, treat last week, girl, and then you want to come this week talking about, oh, you, you hooking up with her. That's usually what the hell happens whenever people bring in a third party into a relationship. That's usually what the fuck happens. You know what I'm saying? That party that you brought in, they usually end up connecting or whatever. And then they end up dipping off on the side behind your back. You know what I'm saying? I done been there, done the fuck that, okay? And so I already know what that situation was given whenever she first gave it. And she first offered it to him. And he's a dude. He gonna do what the fuck he do. So... You can't even be mad, but who you should be mad at is your dang on homegirl because she should have already been knowing what the deal was right off the bat. So she shouldn't even have crossed that damn boundary. So, you know, he a dude, he going to do what he do, but you had to go uh, establish a relationship with her first. You know what I'm saying? That's supposed to be your good friend. She's supposed to have known what the tea was right off the bat. But all y'all's thoughts or whatnot, y'all dang on, you know, hand out coochie coupons and dang on tag a hoe to the next nigga and y'all want to know why y'all be getting played the fuck around because this is the fuck shit that y'all be doing, okay? Anywho, like I said, she, she's pissed the hell off and he's, you know, he's just, you know, trying to downplay the situation like, look, you know, I just wanted to be me and you. You decided to bring her in with us. Like, what what's really the tea? Like, I don't even want to share you and everything like that. So, I don't know if they're trying to establish some type of relationship or whatever, but that's what it kind of seemed like to me. I'm like, girl, you, you stepping out of the whole damn roller being a side chick because, like I say, y'all coochie is fair game for any damn body. So, you can't be sitting up here trying to be territorial whenever you invited another bitch on your dick, okay? Let me just go ahead and say that, you know, and like I say, y'all share men anyway, like, for real, for real. And whenever he came to your damn house, woman party, girl, you was all up in another damn dude face, okay? So, what's really the damn tea, bitch? What's really the tea? I'm just not understanding you, Lynette, and this whole situation. I mean, yeah, he could have said no, but he a dude. He a dude. And dude's gone. If the pussy's laying on the platter, why the fuck is they not going to fuck? Come on now. Come on now. You got to be smarter than that. And like I say, if you're going to be bringing a homegirl in as your damn you know, threesome buddy or whatnot, she need to not be looking better than you. And uh, and uh, and if nothing else, honey, you need to have way cuter panties than uh, she have on. Okay, bitch. All right. And that's just the tea right there. That's just the tea. Boom. Let's move along. Like I said, she done put him on the money team, and she she willing to stick it on now. So like I said, she gonna be sharing this dude because all the things that you would say, you gonna be regretting in the dang on end, or you just gonna have to deal with. It. So. Best thing is, when you see fuck shit, cut that shit off and move right the fuck along. Anywho, the girls is at the dang on Queen Cajun for Nisha's birthday dinner and all that. Diana's there. They look, uh, well, no, not Diana. They talk about Diana. And they looking for her and everything. Or they waiting to hear from her because her mom's been looking for her. You know, she's supposed to be in uh, went to the little, um, where was she supposed to be going? To D.C. or wherever? Somewhere, you know, um, for a little trip or whatever, but ain't nobody heard from her. So, you know, the mom's been reaching out to Lynette, so she's a little worried and everything. Anywho, 
Ren is sitting there. She's happy to celebrate the damn night with her damn boo thing, her girlfriend and all that. And lo and behold, who the fuck pops up? Devin ass. Devin crazy ass. Done popped up or whatever. And, um... Ren is pissed the hell off. She like, what? what's this shit that's all about? Like, what's the tea? Like, did he know that we was here? Like, did you invite him? What's really good or whatnot? And Devin sits down at the table like, bitch, I'm here. And what? So, Nisha, she's the ultimate player. Because she got her dang on girl. And she got her dude. And, you know, they just can't really seem uh, to see eye to eye and everything like that right there. So, Devin, he just lets the damn cat out the bag. Like... You know, Ren, you know, well, not he ain't really addressed Ren. He kind of, you know, just let Ren know, like, she the one who invited me to this old damn shindig. Okay, so, like I say, Ren, you just need to understand your girl that you like or whatever, she like dick and that's just the tea. She like dick and that's just it. Um, Devin, you and Nisha, y'all got this whole little you know, intermingling going on. Devin, you supposed to be married or whatever, but you like your side chick and you like got other chicks on the side. So, I'm just not, like I said, all y'all hoes need to go to the motherfucking clinic or whatnot. And Rand, it's best you get the fuck out of that situation and go find you a true to life lesbian or whatever because shit, Nisha ain't gonna do right. She gonna be right up on that dick. And that's just what it is. Um, I hate to say that for you, girl. But that's just what it is. Um, Ren tells her, girl, don't worry about calling me. And all that. She done walked up out the restaurant. Nisha chasing her or whatever. And um, she pretty much like, girl, fuck you. I don't need you. I don't want to ever speak to your ass again. Like, don't come fucking with me. Anything like that. So... Like I said, that's the episode. You know, the real side shit's to Charlotte, y'all. Hmm. Y'all hoes is entertaining, but I'm gonna need for y'all to clean up these scenes and all this and really not make them look stage as hell. I'm gonna need for y'all girls to stay in y'all lane and know what y'all are giving and what the whole show was all about. Y'all label as side shit. You can't be sitting up here catching feelings for dudes or whatever, and that just is what it is. They ain't gonna just Know your motherfucking roll, bitch. Know your motherfucking roll. And that's all I got to say. Uh, I love you all. Love you all. Hit the subscribe button and uh, bye. <laughs>